turning now to the presidential race, where Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to announce her running mate within the next 36 hours, ahead of a battleground state campaign tour that kicks off tomorrow. The presumptive Democratic nominee is meeting with some potential contenders today after interviewing at least three finalists in Washington Sunday. The latest CBS News poll shows Harris virtually tied with former President Trump in battleground states and within the margin of error nationwide, which is an improvement on where President Biden was when he left the race. He was five points behind Trump. Meanwhile, at a rally in Georgia this weekend, Trump issued a debate ultimatum uh, declaring that he'll participate in one in one hosted or one debate rather hosted by Fox News or not at all. When President Biden was still in the race, both he and Trump had agreed to a September 10th debate. It would have been hosted by ABC News. We have team coverage this morning in uh, Washington on both the Harris and the Trump campaigns. Good to see you guys. We're going to start with CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Jiang, though, who's, of course, at the White House. Um, so, Weijia, listen, when can we expect uh, a VP decision to come down? Are we getting any hints as to a timeline? Well, we always expected that she would announce uh, before tomorrow, of course, because it's already on her schedule that she is going to be campaigning in Philadelphia, your home city, with her running mate. And so it has to happen before then, we expect, or it could happen on the stage, although uh, there are reports that she has already made her decision and that she could announce it in a video message. To be clear, CBS, we are right now working the phones, trying to confirm that ourselves. But the bottom line, Anne-Marie, is that this is going to be imminent. And of course, you know, aides tell us that she wanted to use every last second to make this monumental decision because she didn't have a lot of time to begin with. Usually, the presidential nominee uh, has the luxury of taking several months to go through a very intense process, perhaps have multiple formal interviews with the people that they are considering. But she has been so busy in the past few weeks, uh, you know, transitioning to become the likely Democratic nominee and hitting the campaign trail herself. And so um, this was a very short time frame for the vice president. But again, it's not only Philadelphia. After tomorrow's rally, she and her TBD running mate are going to be crisscrossing six more battleground states, really trying to maintain this wave of momentum that we have been seeing. So, you know, it, obviously a lot of these contenders have been stumping for Kamala Harris. A lot of others have been trying to sort of weigh in and I'm sure influence her decision. On Face the Nation yesterday, United Auto Workers President Sean Fain actually spoke about who he thought would be her best pick. Here's what he had to say. My favorite's Andy Bashir from Kentucky. I mean, I, the man stood with us, um, you know, on the picket line. We really like Tim Walls from Minnesota also. Think he's an awesome guy for labor, 100% behind labor. And uh, those would be our top two if we had to pick any. Okay, so when it comes to other vice presidential contenders uh, like Governor Josh Shapiro, Senator uh, Mark Kelly, uh, Fain suggested that their, their records leave a little bit to be desired when it comes uh, to the labor leader. But what I want to sort of ask you is, what are some of the general factors that we expect Kamala Harris to be kind of leaning into? How important is a group like, a union group like this when it comes to keeping their support and, and, cons and her consideration when it comes to picking a VP? Well, Amory, anytime you're talking about union support, it is incredibly important because what you're really talking about overall is the U.S. economy and jobs and maintaining those jobs within the U.S. And so when you look at critical battleground states like a Michigan or Wisconsin that are really going to be critical um, in this presidential election, anytime you can pick up an endorsement like Sean Fain is a big deal. But the vice president has a lot to consider. And just from observation, from talking to her many aides, I can tell you she wants to vibe with somebody. She wants to have chemistry with somebody. Uh, she wants to be able to go to a you know, a restaurant, sit down and break bread with somebody while talking about their agenda, their policies. And frankly, you know, she is going to be the commander in chief if she wins. So she has to choose somebody that's going to be on board and support her policies. Um, there is this idea that, you know, 
as we've seen from Donald Trump and other Republicans, that she's being portrayed as extremely progressive and liberal. So there's an idea that she may want to balance out the ticket with somebody more moderate to make it a more well-balanced ticket. And you have to wonder what exactly is Joe Biden leaving behind that whoever she's going to pick can fill. Mm. And so there's a lot of factors here, Anne-Marie, but at the end of the day, it's her decision uh, alone to make. Of course, she has advisors, but we should know within the next 36 hours, um, at the longest, who it's going to be. It's going to be a busy 36 hours, not just for her, but for you, too. Yeah. Uh, Ouija, thank you very much. Thanks. For more on what the Trump campaign has been up to, I want to bring in CBS News campaign reporter Jake Rosen. Jake, always good to see you. Let us start with former President Trump's debate ultimatum. What can you tell us about this? What are both sides asking for? Does it seem like either is willing to compromise and we could actually see a debate? We'll have to see, Anne-Marie, and thanks for having me on. We saw Donald Trump late Friday night say that he would be willing to debate Kamala Harris on September 10th on September 4th, and that would be in Pennsylvania, where Trump and his campaign have put a lot of resources. But the Harris campaign says that they're sticking to the initially agreed upon date when President Biden was at the top of the ticket. Now, Trump said in a couple interviews over the weekend and also at the rally that he kind of was noncommittal about doing that debate that he had previously agreed to, blaming a defamation suit that he has going on against ABC News for why he can't do that. Obviously, that lawsuit was still in place when he agreed to do the debates in the first place. But we'll have to see. The Trump campaign did say for months that they would debate President Biden anywhere, anytime, any place. Obviously, after Kamala Harris became at the top of the ticket, her momentum rose. As we saw with our latest CBS News polling, they have been far more noncommittal about exactly how and where they would compromise to make this debate happen. And then on Saturday, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance held a rally in Atlanta at the same venue where Harris campaigned just days prior. Um, during his speech, Donald Trump, you know, he kind of repeated some of the insults we've heard before. I want to play some of what he had to say. Together we will stop Kamala Harris's nation wrecking. I'll tell you what, when you see what she's done to our nation, she's wrecking our nation. The radicalism will take back our country from the worst administration in American history. Biden was the worst president in the history of our country. She's acknowledged to be the worst vice president in the history of our country. So, Jake, you were actually at that rally. Uh, Trump also reopened a sort of old feud with Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. I know that, uh, the, that the Trump campaign has been kind of workshopping, I think you will, um, how they're going to approach Kamala Harris, right? They don't have the luxury of uh, taking polls and figuring out the right messaging. So you've probably heard things evolve. But any idea what's behind this, this particular strategy, this attack strategy? Well, they're seeking to define Kamala Harris on both her immigration policies and her economic policies while she's been in office and while she was a presidential candidate back in 2019 and 2020. But we've seen this kind of failed so far Trump campaign workshop of what Kamala Harris's immigration and border policies are to a wider audience, not just the Trump base. They're still working it out in real time. We saw at the rally, they put up signage about that Indian American and black comment that Trump made earlier in the week. But they also try to target her, calling her dangerously liberal, which is why when we, we just says that her vice presidential picks might be someone maybe more moderate in the Democratic lane, that's kind of what she's hoping to balance, that the Trump campaign can't continue to call her that. Now, when you go to Brian Kemp, this is Trump reopening a years-long feud going back to the certification of the 2020 election, when Brian Kemp certified the election for Joe Biden and not Donald Trump, despite Trump's claims that the election was rigged against him in the state of Georgia. The Brian Kemp has said that he would vote for Donald Trump, but at the same time, Kemp and Trump got into a social media spat right before the rally on Saturday, and Trump has you know, continued to attack him, basically calling him weak on crime. Little, he tagged him with a new nickname, Little Brian Kemp. Now, it should be noted that Brian Kemp has an approval rating in the 60 percent in Georgia, and he's won his elections handedly, and he told Donald Trump to focus on the policies. Huh. Uh, he does like a good feud. Uh, Jake Rosen, thank you very much.